Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, despite not being there this weekend, we're going to be chatting all about the Hero Clicks for Huntingtons at the Rock Cup event that was held in Huntsville, Alabama. Let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode 516. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. You can use code DIAL5, D I A L5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Use code DIAL H10 for 10% off your order at the shop.wizkids website. Does not work with pre orders, iconics, other special deals, offers, etc., etc. Joining me, not always in the studio is Bill Desrochet. Bill, how is it going? It's going great, Calder. And I gotta say, I really love what you guys have done with the studio. Some of the improvements, very impressive. We after we had the flood early in January that just almost completely ruined the studio, we really had to just do new carpet. We had to tear out a few walls. And we decided that if we're already going to do all this work, let's just really spruce it up. So I'm glad that you're enjoying the new studio space. It was kind of a lot of hard work, and but I think it was worth it. it I mean, it is. And the Infinity Pool, I love the Infinity Pool. I'll check that out later. <laughs> you know, uh, that was Ian's idea. He just wanted to start getting some laps in. So we're like, all right. <laughs> you know, so we, you know, quality of life changes all around. Simeon's not going to be able to be a part of the show this week. Uh, I was just getting back in from a trip, and he is actually gone also on a trip somewhere else. So I'm going to be recording the show with our special guest. Uh, before we get into what made us happy, Bill, tell the community a little bit about yourself. I know you. You're a longtime supporter of Dial H for Hero Clicks. You've been on our Patreon. You've been a uh, Dial H super fan. You know, you've, you've rode with Dial H through thick and thin, so... I know, I know why you're on the show, and I'm having a blast chatting with you, but why don't you let the listener know a little bit about oh, you? Don't forget, two-time reigning Bad Sam world That's, champion. You're right. You're right. Two-time reigning Bad Sam world champion. I forgot. That's I apologize. how I introduce myself when I meet a new person. I'm like, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you, Bill. Two-time reigning Bad Sam world champion. They're like, oh, that's you? I'm like, yeah, that's me. I've been playing Hero Clicks off and on since 2004, but there was a lot of off Okay. <laughs> until until about 2020, which is you know the best year possible to decide to get back into Hero. That was a but, really good year to start playing Hero. It was. Clicks, if I recall, me, I was like, man, I picked the right year to get back into Hero. Clicks. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just I, I love Hero. Clicks. Been listening to the podcast since uh, 2020, and I I credit the podcast for sure with helping me learn about the game. And it's a very new player friendly podcast. In fact, the new player friendly episode of the podcast is the first episode of Dial H that I ever listened to. And I, you know, was like playing Hero Clicks and I stopped and then 2020 stuck indoors, looked through my closet and found my old Hero Clicks. And I was like, do they even still make this game? What kind How of clicks were in your closet, game? Bill? What were your closeted were, clicks? I, I was a closeted clicks player, but I'm now out of the closet. And I thought, like, how many people even play this game? Like, 100? So I went online to look and see, does it still exist? And the answer was yes. And then I was like, all right, well, there has to be podcasts about Hero Clicks. There's a podcast about everything, right? So I looked, and I was like, all right, I see a few podcasts. I'm not sure which one I listen to. Uh, let's see if any of these have, like, a like a sort of a primer new player episode. I, I Google that, and Dial H came up and been listening ever since and just continuously – growing my game now i'm looking to go to worlds for the first time this year i've always been more of a casual player since i started playing but trying to work on my competitive game been playing a lot of matches online played a few last night actually while i was in the dial h discord with some other uh patreon members so nice. it was a good time patreon good place to find a game if you want one there you go so right on bill well i'm happy to have you on the show hopefully the community has got a little bit of an idea of you know when you started who you are as a player uh we're gonna jump into what made us happy this week i'll just go ahead and get mine out of the way it was a lot uh, but i went to baltimore slash philadelphia this past weekend for the philly fan expo it was a cosplay convention with a lot of special guests, you know, a lot of celebrities and stuff like that. No celebrities really caught my eye, so I didn't get any autographs or any photo shoots or any pictures or anything crazy like that. But I just kind of went around, enjoyed the con floor. Best part was that when I was Guy Gardner, 
I got stopped a lot for pictures with Guy Gardner versus the first time I wore that costume was back in 2018, and that was at the South Dakota convention, a Supercon convention, and like nobody knew or cared who Guy Gardner was. But now that I was in a bigger city, a little bit more of a comic focus on a convention, not only were there people that knew who I was, uh, but there were people that were like excited to see a Guy Gardner. And I really enjoyed that. We, My buddy was Alan Scott. So we were doing like a double lantern day. It was kind of crazy how many other lanterns we ran into. There were two, count them, two Tomar Rays. There was a Sinestro, a Kyle Rayner, the worst lantern, uh, a John Stewart, another Alan Scott, uh, apparently there was a Kilowog, but I never saw him, so I don't know if he actually did that's, show up or not. I know, right? Yeah, okay. like that's a that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So, and there was a few other lanterns. There was an Arissa, I think that's how you say her name. That's like the girl Green Lantern. She's like yellow, I think. Arissa. I think that's it for like different colored lanterns. But then we saw a second guy Gardner right as we were leaving the convention, which is like really cool, and did it's kind of crazy. Hair down? Was it like? You guys like staring each other down, like who's the better, who's the no, better guy? guy we, were, we were both just like, wow, it's so awesome to see somebody, you know, also cosplaying a character that we enjoy. Probably the funniest thing was that we had all of the main four like Green Lanterns, but Hal Jordan. There were we did not run into a single Hal Jordan the entire day. When you think, because like that's like Green Lantern. When you say Green Lantern, the first one you think of is Hal Jordan. You know, you have to say like Green Lantern, Alan Scott or Green Lantern, John Stewart when you mean anybody else. Right. But when you just say Green Lantern, you're like, yeah, brown haired mask pilot man. So it was kind of funny. So that was just such an absolute blast. It was a ton of fun. And then for the first time in a long time, I watched a ridiculous amount of movies over the course of the weekend. It just kind of ended up shaking out this way. So over the course of when I got there Thursday night to when I arrived back in Omaha at midnight on Monday, I watched seven movies, three on flights, and then one for each day I was hanging out with my buddy. So I don't know if you remember this, Bill, but like forever ago, I don't know if it was 2021 or 2020, there were four or five episodes where I was watching like almost 10 movies a week, and then I would just rank them in order of compared to the other movies I watched. And I think it led for some really funny movie rankings. Uh, so we're going to do that again right now. So right. in in no particular order, first, I watched... I'll actually, I'll tell you in the order that I watched them. How's that sound? Uh, Chronological. Chronological order. I watched Seven, the 1990 TV movie special Generation X from Fox. Oh, the yeah, 19... I remember that came out. You do, actually? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched that. I think I have that on VHS somewhere. So... Crazy. We decided to watch the televised version of Generation X that had like the ads and whatever else and stuff, which mm -hmm. let us know that Generation X premiered 1990 on Mardi Gras. Why on earth would you ever premiere a television mm -hmm. show on Fox on Mardi Gras? I don't. On Fox, whatever. It doesn't matter what the TV station is. Hard, but, I mean, but, you you got to cut loose on Mardi Gras. I that's, guess that's so. Cool. So when you're cut loose, you watch the Generation X TV movie. Dude, I guess. Uh, it was it was really wild. So the next movie we saw, slightly better than Generation X, that spoils the rankings a little bit. But we saw the 1994, also a uh, Marvel property, the Fantastic Four movie that never was officially released. Mm-hmm. Then we watched the Watchmen Ultimate Edition, Monty Python's Holy Grail, mm -hmm. Mean Girls, and The Iron Claw. The Iron Claw, that's the first one. I'm not sure if I've seen that. That is a newer movie. I think it came out late last year. That is the uh, Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen, uh, whatever oh, his name yeah, is, yeah, yeah. the wrestling about the Von Erics. I have not seen it, but yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. So uh, now... From worst to best with slight review, uh, here's my how I rank these movies. Uh, Generation X is worst. Uh, even though it like wasn't bad, it was like kind of fun. It had like Jubilee and Emma Frost and Sean Cassidy and all this stuff. Uh, but Did it was you know bad. That was, that was supposed to be a TV show. And ah. that movie was the pilot. And the pilot movie bombed so bad, like nobody watched it. So they just canceled the TV show. So I'll say this. Even it's the worst out of this list, 
but it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. And honestly, for like being a 1990 whatever like X Men movie, compared to the 1990 TV movie Captain America, it's better than that, you know. Uh, but it is goofy. It's a little goofy, but overall not bad. So, Generation I X does. The David David Hasselhoff Nick Fury movie. Uh, I love that movie. That movie's like a say, fine that, movie. That movie's solid. Yeah, that, that movie's solid. good. Yeah, like I I like that. Uh, second to last, so in sixth place, we have the 1994 version of the Fantastic Four. Have you seen this one, Bill? I have seen this, yes. Uh, so the most comic accurate representation of the Fantastic Four in film, just straight up. Uh, <laughs> of course. I think that's true. Uh, I particularly loved the Doom actor. He really knew that he couldn't use his facial expressions with the mask, so he used the hell out of his hands. I mean, this man was acting with his hands all the time he drew out in the air uh the number 12 at one point i forget he said he said 12 and then he drew it out in the air and i was like ah okay doom the best scene in the movie is when dr doom sends in doom bots uh and they fail to stop the fantastic four and then he walks Mm -hmm. back in thinking that they won or something but then he just sees it's empty and he just goes huh and that's and that's it and then the scene ends uh so it was really funny. It was a good. It was a good time. They used to sell copies of that on DVD or VHS at like comic conventions back in the day because it was never released. So like, right? I'd be at like Wizard World Chicago, and they'd be like, "Oh, you want to buy a copy of this?" So at one point, I did. Okay, right I on. Probably have it sitting around on DVD somewhere. I'm not sure where, but I know at one point I bought a copy of it. Uh, in fifth place, and you could probably tie these two for fifth or fourth. But in fifth place, we have Monty Python's Holy Grail. Um, just for, I've seen it a bunch of times. It's a classic. I put it on just because I wanted to put it on. I love Monty Python's Holy Grail. It's a fun trip. Although I will say, every time I start that movie, I'm like, yeah, I know how this movie goes. This happens and this happens and this happens. But then I kind of always forget that it just sort of ends um, with every, like, very, like, unceremoniously, they just kind of, spoilers for Monty Python's Holy Grail, uh, they just kind of get arrested. And then the movie is over. Uh, it's just kind of funny. But it's always such a fun ride. So even though it's low on the list, don't make it think I don't like that movie. I love Monty Potton's Holy Grail. Uh, number four is Mean Girls. I'd never seen Mean Girls before, even though I've listened to the musical a lot. I heavily enjoy listening to the musical. I didn't realize just how many memes came from Mean Girls. And it's a pretty fun movie. It's very much of the early 2000s. Uh, but it is a very enjoyable movie. I hope Lindsay Lohan uh, has doing well and nothing rocky has happened since that movie came out because she's got a bright career ahead of her. Uh, I hope uh, nothing... <laughs> Sorry, it's a terrible joke. Anyways. Bad news, Paul. That was, that was peak Lindsay Lohan. That was, yeah. Uh, but no, it really was actually just like a really fun movie. It's very early 2000s, um, but there's like, yeah, just a lot of memes from that movie that I didn't realize. Also, looking back, stacked cast. Uh so Mean Girls, number three, uh, Watchmen, Ultimate Edition. I'd never seen the Ultimate Edition of Watchmen. It's not too terribly different from normal Watchmen. I love the Watchmen movie. Comic fans, I understand there's a lot of differences in the Watchmen movie to the comic, but for the most part to me, it's very, very close to how like things happen in the comic. And the things that I care about the most, aka how Comedian is handled, is all pretty much right on. So I'm pretty okay with this movie's version of it. I understand there's some aspects people don't like. But the biggest thing I noticed that was different was the old Night Owl gets a fight scene. Whereas I think he just dies in the original cut of the movie. But he gets a fight scene fighting the Not Tops. And as he punches them, they flash into old villains that he would have fought during his time as Night Owl. So it's actually like a really cool, almost short film in and of itself, this five-minute short film of just saying, yeah, I'm a retired hero. Then they come to get him, and then as he punches, he kind of gives them a fight, but then he just gets ganged up on, and he sees the flashes of his yesteryears. It's really good, really, really good scene. Like, like that alone made this, again, a stunning, great rewatch of Watchmen, which is always a great movie. Is, I haven't seen that. Is that on HBO Max? We watched a DVD of it, so it was not on HBO Max. As I don't know if it is. I probably is, right? But I don't know if it is or isn't. Uh, number two is The Iron Claw. This movie wrecked me emotionally. I, I cried several times during The Iron Claw. If you have family, 
if you have certain relationships with your family, um, especially if you are, uh, well, I'll just say, if you are a man, if you are a brother and you have brothers, this movie is going to absolutely tear you apart. It, it will, it'll shred you down to its, to your core. Um, I won't lie. I, even being like a wrestling fan, I wasn't super familiar with the Von Erich family that much, like at all, just cause I never really, I wasn't alive at that point in time. So all my wrestling stuff is like, Oh, who was popular back then? I kind of watched it, you know, but I wasn't aware of everything that happened. So even though there are some dramatizations, this is still a semi like true story of what happened. Uh, yeah, man, it just, it just cut me. It cut me to my core. It was insane. Uh, and then number one was seven. Seven is, I literally could not believe I'd never seen seven before in my entire life when I finally decided to watch seven. I like started it being like the, I think this what's is the, the what's in the box movie, right? And then I'm like, yeah, oh, yep, that's what it is. Um, and then when it gets to the point where you kind of feel he's about to lead up to what's in the box, because you've seen the meme, you're like, oh, I guess this is probably the only thing in the box that would make him act that way. Okay, oh, did sure. Did you actually not know what was in the box before you? I did not know what was in the box, but probably like I don't know. As we're getting to that point, I'm like, oh, that's probably what's in the box, right? Is kind of where my brain was at. So even though I, I did not know going into the movie, but as we got to that scene, I was like, oh yeah, because spoilers for seven. I'm not gonna blatantly say it, but. Spoilers for Seven, it's as he kills people, it's in the way of like the Seven Deadly Sins, and it's, I think Envy and Wrath are the two that haven't happened yet, and so as he's doing the what's in the box, I was like, oh, I see, he's like talking about how envious he is of blah, 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 so I'm like, okay, Wrath is gonna be that guy, okay, sure, is kind of how I, I was like, oh, duh, and the only thing that would make him is, yeah, probably this, um, I won't lie. I was still really hoping, uh, like spoilers for Seven, he wasn't gonna shoot uh, the killer guy, I was like, dang. I really thought maybe he wouldn't because, you know, uh, Morgan Freeman is going, he'll win. He wins if you do this. He wins. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, ah, don't let him win, man, please. But it's like, nah, this, yeah, this is the coup de grace. This is the, the bow on top. But yeah, seven, amazing movie. Absolutely incredible movie. So the, the ranking really quickly, uh, best movie I saw, seven, then The Iron Claw, Watchmen Ultimate Edition, Mean Girls, Monty Python's Holy Grail, 1994, Fantastic Four, and then in last place, it is Generation X. But all right, that's enough about the movies I watched this past week. Uh, Bill, what made you happy? I'll tell you what didn't make me happy. Okay. Somebody I know did a Guy Gardner cosplay, and he didn't even go all in in <laughs> eyes hair red. So... And I was like... Somebody is not committed to the bit here. So really, I guess really quickly about the hair. You can't take aerosol spray on an airplane for whatever reason. I don't know. So my plan A was just to spray my hair with this orange hair stuff that I have a ton of. Um, my plan B was I bought this wig that was a female bob cut wig and I was just going to trim it to be short sure, enough to yeah. look like the bowl cut. A bowl cut, yeah, sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But then in my hacking away with the scissors, I I cut once, didn't measure twice, and mm -hmm. sure enough, I looked, uh, I, it looked very bad. The wig was very, very short, and it did not, it did not look good. Uh, and I'm not even sure it would have stayed on my head uh, all that well honestly so that is why the the hair was bad don't worry it killed me the entire time because i was like man i'm getting the no most like noticed i've ever gotten as like guy gardner and i'm not don't even have the ginger bowl cut ironically a few people said glad you didn't do the bowl cut man and i'm like i, I thought it would have rocked honestly if i could have gotten it you gotta go bowl cut if you're gonna go guy gardner it's the most iconic look guy gardner it's the most iconic look. It's the, like, I'm not going to say it's the best look, but it's the most iconic look, period. Well, it's not the haircut that I myself would choose to emulate, but when I think Guy Gardner, I think bowl cut. Oh, 100%. 100%. Sorry that they didn't make you happy, though, Bill. I apologize. It didn't make <laughs> so me happy depressing. either. So depressing, but I pulled through. Uh, now, what actually did make me happy, oddly, was also watching stuff. Well, I didn't realize that's what Calder was going to say. That's okay. I'll not quite as elaborate as a uh, as Calder. I'm not gonna have a ranking here, but I don't watch a ton of TV. But recently, I have I just finished uh, Shogun, which I enjoyed quite thoroughly, and I'm looking forward to the second season. 
I actually like going in, I did not know that it was going to be a multi-season show. Like I didn't really, mm. really like press stuff about it or anything. I know it was a novel and I haven't read, or I think a series of novels, but I have not, I have not read those. And I just kind of assumed it was a mini series where the first season was just going to be the whole thing. Right. And I watched it and it was good and ends on, you know, in a cool spot. Not no spoilers for anybody who hasn't watched it. Um, pretty sure it's on Hulu if you wanna wanna go back and catch up. But I, I was very entertained by that. And then I just started watching um Fallout, which is a show that I had no real like hype for at all. Because I, I played a little bit of the video games, but I was never like a big time Fallout guy. But my brother-in-law is like super into Fallout, and then he was watching the show, and they were telling me it's good. So I was like, you know what, I'll watch it. And I think I'm three episodes in, and I'm like, you know what, pretty good. I'm liking. It. I'm like, this is. I don't know much about the games, but I'm, you don't really need to. It's just an entertaining TV show. Right on. That's about where I'm at with Fallout, and that's also just kind of how I feel. Where I'm like, I've never really played the games. I know they're popular. I kind of know sort of like cultural osmosis a little bit about them but yeah it is just kind of like a good show that you can watch without knowing anything about fallout become the what's it called the uh the very thing you swore to destroy the uh oh my gosh a a mainstream like nerd you've you've mainstreamed something and now normies are in it right that would be you and i Mm -hmm. we would be normie fans of fallout right yeah yeah via via nerd law if i'm like going out tomorrow to buy groceries and i'm wearing a fallout like t-shirt i'm like a poser basically basically yep that would be i mean that would be correct via nerd law that would be correct all right guys finally gonna jump into some news here with the hero clicks for huntington's event happening this past weekend uh, i just want to prerequisite all of this in saying i was not there bill was not there we are probably not the most qualified to discuss the happenings, the goings on and everything. We are going to try our best to give you a show that is about an event that you may or may not have attended and kind of give you an idea of what happened there and what was going on. But again, we weren't there. We don't have as many insights. If you want to, uh, Critical Clicks was there. They're a podcast. Clicks Off was, I know this is like not at all what you're supposed to do is saying go listen to somebody else's show but just being honest with you guys there were other shows that were there degeneration clicks was there i think that is it as far as like podcasts go i think it was degeneration clicks clicks off and critical clicks they did a big picture of all the the content creators that were there if hero clicks headquarters ends up making any content based off of this he was also there of course azale with the alpha strike provided the coverage there so if you want some full gameplay if you want to see live streams from every day if you want to look at some polls some event pictures go look at the alpha strike facebook page or the alpha strike youtube channel to kind of get a, a good idea of what was going on that's what we're using We're using a combination of things that are just online to kind of tell you guys what we understand. Uh, At the time of this recording, Clay has not updated HC units. I don't really know the total full standings or all the builds for the teams that were ran each day. So that's just kind of an is what it is type of scenario. Uh, We just don't have that information, but I wanted to get an episode out this week because it's Tuesday in it and we just want to get rolling. So Really quickly, the Tracy Brock Memorial event is what kicked off Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday of almost a week ago now, which is kind of insane. So yeah, like Wednesday a week ago was the start of Hero Clicks for Huntington's. It was a five-day-ish event. Very, 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 very long event. They do A, B, and C. It's a three-person team sealed event. Looking at... I'm going to freeze frame this picture here. Looks like we have some Invincible Iron Man, some Guardians of the Galaxy, and I think a Streets of Gotham booster. And I think there are some LEs. There are some Lord of the Rings boosters mixed in, some Legion of Superheroes boosters. It's a big hodgepodge sealed event. Looks like no tab app this year, which is kind of funny. And I believe even some Avengers Defenders War is mixed in. So I don't know what the A, B, or C player was all playing necessarily. 
but that was the sealed uh, that they were doing, which was just kind of these hodgepodge of boosters. So not much to say there, except I want to say we have the team that won, which is shout out to Lucas, right? I want to say, yeah. Shout out to Lucas Van Holland, Ethan Jacobs, and Scott Crampton for winning. Then there was the Rock Regional. Going to kind of blaze past this one. It was a regional. Again, shout out Mike Eskew. He won the regional and wasn't even uh, sure he was going to play in it, which is kind of crazy. So uh, winning the regional, let me go over his team if I can find it. I'm going to try to see. Mike was playing the L.E. Thanos, the dreaded uh mic like mind control through 10 squares of blocking forever ago we're gonna try to figure out sorry mike if i don't fully understand your handwriting here uh he had lightning and incandescence on thanos he had 062 fufo dr doom with of course a doom sideline he had wwe ring he had i want to say this is chainsaw wonder woman she's 50 points then I think Red Wing was on her Magim Jaspers with Spin and Influence, as well as he had Surter. Uh, and I'm not going to get into his tarot cards, but that was Mike's team, and he won the qualifier on Thursday. So again, shout out Mike Eskew there. And then let's go ahead and chat, because I want to say, what was Friday? Was Friday Scott Porter versus the... No, that was 3v3 Team Highlander. Shout out Team Fenix Nest for winning highlander that's what it was i was like there's so many events it's such a crazy long event bill what do you think of you have you ever played in a team event bill i've never played in a team event. i've played in sealed events and i played in uh constructed i've played in you know constructed silver constructed modern um i mean i played in some other random stuff like the bradcast finale event but i've okay. never played in a team event before i always like to say uh whenever we talk about the extreme highlander a constructed team event for people that have played in a seal team event that's very fun it's always great kind of seeing what you can do but there's something even more where you feel more connected as a team when you're all building your your teams around like what you can and cannot play so for the 3v3 event it was this extreme highlander where anything that's on my team can't be on your team or be on the other guy's team so a b and c if it's on b it can't be on a and c so it's really interesting where you try to min max each other's builds with what you can play what you can't play it's super interesting it's super fun so again shout out team uh fennec's nest for winning that good job there guys which is again hilarious and then saturday bill i you were probably just as excited about this as i was but we had the deadpool weapon x sealed event how did you feel just as a onlooker going into this event, what were you excited about for the Scott Porter versus the World Sealed? I was really excited just to see what we don't know yet. Like, obviously, Dial H did a brick unboxing, and there was, a, of course, a Scott Porter brick unboxing as well. So we've seen some of the set, but not all of it. And this is honestly a set that, like, speaks to my heart. Because this is a set based a lot on 90s X-Men, and 90s X-Men is what Bill cut his teeth on when okay. it came to comic books. So, I loved seeing all the, uh, like, seeing previous how the X-Men were going to be in the yellow and blue costumes, like, their, where they had that run where the newer X-Men, not the classic from, like, the 60s, but the new guys were rocking those classic yellow and blues. I thought that was cool. We get, like, the 90s X-Force, we get the 90s X-Factor, we get, obviously, we get a lot of Weapon X and Deadpool, and it's just, this is a set where I've been somewhat abstaining from buying a lot of, like, sealed product over the last few sets, but this is one that I feel like I gotta buy in, too, because these are pieces that I want to own, even if they aren't competitive. So, I was definitely excited to see what people pulled and what interesting stuff was going to be in there. Probably biggest thing I thought going into this, well, the biggest thing is the same as you. I just want to see new stuff pulled, primarily like Zombie, Wolverine, and a few other like new stuff that we knew about from the set list, uh, but hadn't seen yet. But I was also curious to see, because I kind of think that Phoenix Wolverine is like a pull em and win type of thing, where he's just like an auto play in sealed and kind of an yeah. auto win. Because I'm just like, I don't know how you're killing that in sealed. I really don't. Um, I will say uh, it did get end up getting the same treatment as last year where we had to do Beyond Amazing 
and Avengers 60th last year. So this year it was one booster next phase and then one booster of Deadpool Weapon X, which is a pretty crazy sealed combination. Uh, I think it changes things up a little bit where now it's like, I don't know like the generic keyword spread between both of them, but obviously there's like no X-Men at all in uh, in Deadpool Weapon X. To be fair, there weren't really any spider people or Sinister Syndicate in A60 either. So they were two very different sets. So making a theme team would have been a little tougher. A handful of other things. I don't know, like there's not that many mystics in the... Deadpool Weapon X set. There's a lot of like charge blades. So it's kind of curious to see like how well those two sets would even play together. Again, we didn't play. I mean, so I don't know how well, well they played together. The one positive you could say about that though is the one of the reasons they had to do that is because of how many people signed up, right? If Yes. So obviously at no point is anyone showing up to an event and saying, Man, I hope like not that many people sign up so I get two boosters of Deadpool and Weapon X, like that's not what you want. You want to have as many people there as possible. You want your Heroclix event to be popping off. So it is a positive at the end of the day that they had to make sure that they were switching between two sets. But yes, I mean, it's early, early release. It's really cool, WizKids, that they're doing, you know, such a like nice thing for the Heroclix for Huntington's charity event to get that stuff out to them really early. But it's obviously not possible for them to produce an infinite amount of a set that far ahead of time so that everybody could have all the mulligans they want for everything to be perfect. But at the end of the day, I think we'd all rather have a lot of people show up to a charity event like Heroclix for Huntington's. Absolutely. 100% agree. Uh, do you want to talk about any of the figures that were pulled that we got to see? Yeah. There was uh, one particular figure I, I looked at that I thought was really cool. How about you? Uh, yeah, there's definitely one. Uh, the zombie Wolverine, I was dying to know. Like, that was, like, my number one, like, I gotta know what this figure does. Huge Marvel Zombies guy. Um, and we finally get to see it. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack into zombie Wolverine here really quickly. So, this is, and actually, a few of the figures we saw this weekend, um, like, the first one I saw was Wolverine and LCD get spoiled for me again, like, at a convention, randomly checking my phone, trying to be like, oh, what's going on? Uh, we got to see a, like a lot of the Wolverine squad, which is really cool. So zombie Wolverine is also part of the Wolverine squad. He's 75 points. He has a deceased dial, which is really, really cool where it's like, okay, he doesn't have the old school Z virus, you know, food and uh, virus tokens or anything, but now he's got the little Z virus dial. And I really, really love how it, it's done. I think it's really clever. So it's got improved. He's got improved movement characters, which again, the, the taste, what was it called? The sense of decay, the smell of decay, something like that. That was the special name for their improved movement back when the improved movement had special flavor text. Uh, Wolverine Squad trait. When this character rolls a five or six on a single D6 roll after resolutions, you may heal a friendly character with the Wolverine Squad trait one click. I think this is particularly helpful with Zombie Wolverine, but we'll get into that in a little bit here. His second trait is Z Virus. When Zombie Wolverine damages an opposing character with an attack, give the damaged character a virus token. Slash slash. Characters with virus tokens have, at the beginning of your turn, deal this character one unavoidable damage, then remove a virus token from them. I really like that. I think it's pretty cool. It's a different way of doing it. It's kind of a slow poison getting infected. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about his last one, and I love this so much. The trade is called That Surfer Tasted Funny. The first time Zombie Wolverine would be KO'd, you may instead turn him to click number 9. If you do this game, he has the Wing Movement Symbol Cosmic Energy Team Ability. And then he also has, when Zombie Wolverine would take damage from a game effect, he takes one unavoidable damage instead. At the end of your turn, Zeal deals Zombie Wolverine one unavoidable damage, protected Pulse Wave. So, same thing, he goes on to these last three clicks of life, which just have insane stats. I would think, yeah, I'd say insane across the board. They're kind of crazy, high and low. Um, and then, yeah, he gets Flight and then Cosmic Energy. Like, when they eat Silver Surfer at the end of the story, and they all get kind of Cosmic Energy and Galactus kind of powers. Uh, I guess this is more Silver Surfery powers, not quite full-on Galactus. So it's they, really cool. They eat Galactus at one point, right? They do. They do eat Galactus all the way at the end of the story. But there is, like, a midpoint where they eat the Silver Surfer, and then they have to fight some other zombies, and then some of them don't make it out of that fight, and then they finish off 
Galactus. They it's kind of crazy. The Marvel zombies, very smart zombies. They build a special machine to use their combined Silver Surfer cosmic energy to shoot Galactus. It's kind of it's kind of nuts. Uh, so his dial, he's got seven clicks of life. He's a charge, precision strike, invulnerability, shape change piece. Goes on to flurry blades, combo reflexes, battle fury for two clicks, and then his last clicks are sidestep, <laughs> steel energy regeneration and then exploit weakness for those two clicks his special zombie silver surfer clicks he has all all three of these have hypersonic speed with invincible and then the last two of them have blades claws fangs he is a i just love the stats so first click of this one he is a 6 12 17 3 sure then he is a 4 13 18 4 and then his last click, he is a three movement, 14 attack, 19 defense, five damage with Blaze Claws Fang. So you're always dealing at least four, I guess. It's kind of nuts where if you want to go for the six, you can. If not, you're dealing four. It's pretty gnarly. I love Zombie Wolverine. I love the flavor of this piece. I the, the thing it got me most excited for is I just hope that means we get to see the rest of the main Marvel zombies, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Luke Cage colonel america i think that's all of like the ones that actually get surfer infused there is maybe giant i think yeah giant man so if we could get a i don't know iconics or if the next whatever avengers set i don't know if black panther would maybe have it there there was a time they were in wakanda for a little bit during the marvel zombie storyline like the second or third storyline so this guy gets me really excited for more marvel zombies wolverine is the most yeah he is the most made Marvel zombie now confirmed with this one. It was him and Spider-Man each had two versions and now Wolverine has three versions of zombie Wolverine. So uh, I really just hope they make the rest of the crew, but I don't know. I really like this piece. I think it's really fun. Uh, I don't know if he's like crazy competitive or anything, but I think he's solid and I really enjoy him. Did the zombie Captain America from Disney plus have Z virus as a keyword? He did not have Z virus. <laughs> Oh no. So that was, Too yeah, bad. probably the coolest thing about this Wolverine is that he brings back the Z virus keyword, which I just love. That Albeit, is cool. sure. he is not unique. So all the other zombies <laughs> were could unique. Make, you, play, you could play four of them. So I could four play four of this guy. I guess. Point, the Z virus team. Yep. I'm down. Uh, who do you want to talk about, Bill? I want to talk about Major Logan because Major Logan uh, comes from. Maybe my favorite comic book story of all time, that's wow. Days of Future Past. When I was a kid, like, I read those in reprint, and I remember thinking, like, oh, man, these are so expensive, which back then they were probably, like, 50 bucks. <laughs> I was just like, they're so expensive, I'll never be able to afford, afford to buy these, and thankfully I do own them now. But I absolutely love, I love Days of Future Past. James Cameron legitimately just ripped off the storyline of Days of Future Past to make the Terminator movies, like, just think about it. It's a fact. Um, hmm. Major Logan is the Wolverine from that comic book. And the only mild disappointment will be the fact that I kind of wanted him to legacy card the other one of the other Major Logans where hmm. it's literally just the cover where, you know, you can see the um, that like wall. There's the wall behind him and it's got like the all the different X-Men that were like wanted or dead or whatever. Like that was such a cool sculpt because it looked just like the cover and both the coverish like covers for the days of future past storyline are so iconic but yeah. i'm still never going to be disappointed about a major logan we got him standing on top of a sentinel head like destroyed sentinel so cool it looks great what is it? looks really yeah, cool it, it is really cool he's got the exiles future and x-men keyword and he is 75 points he's eight clicks long he starts off as an eight special speed 12 precision strike 18 invulnerable and four special damage. And what do those do? Well, first of all, he's got Wolverine Squad, just like Calder mentioned. When this character rolls a five or six on a single D6 roll, after resolutions, you may heal a friendly character with a Wolverine Squad trait one click. Then his special speed power is, of course, Days of Future Past. Sidestep Flurry. Flurry is free, but only to target a character with a Colossal Damage Symbol, Giant Damage Symbol, or Robot Keyword, which is a lot of things that are in the in the meta. So he can flurry, then flurry as free against Kong, which is just Ooh, great. Okay. Then his special damage power, 
follow my lead, and we just might survive. Leadership. If there are one or more opposing characters that share a name with another character on the map, friendly characters increase their single D6 rolls by plus one, and opposing characters decrease their single D6 rolls by minus one. So this is also useful. You got your, some people might be playing multiple Kongs or multiple Carnage Silver Surfers. Uh, guess what? Scott Porter and Scott Porter share a name. Mm. Even though they're not the same figure. Surprise, How surprise. many people are playing Scott Porter and Scott Porter? A lot. So this guy, I think, has a spot in the meta, at least in the meta right now, because there's so many things that people are playing where he actually buffs himself or hurts the opposing team just on what he does. And he's, he's 75 points. He's, he's eight clicks long. He doesn't go down easy. I mean, no. I really like this. I'm very happy with it. Like I said, one of my favorite like comic book stories line, lines of all time. I love it. I'm very happy. I'm going to have to pick this piece up. He's pretty unique. The probably only bummer is the no reducer at all on his 50-point line. He seems like he might get punked a little fast then because I really like the 75-point line, but it's kind of like, is that is that too many points then at that point? Is the extra 25 points like worth yeah, it? Yeah, I would, I would definitely worry about him on 50 points. We're like, man, he could get one shot. And yeah. he's playing me, his, and when he's a such a powerful like offensive piece it's real risky to get him in there at 50 where it's like okay he just gets crushed like he just gets one shot by or at least easily one turn by any meta figure and that's rough even though he's good against meta figures it's risky to play him at 50 i don't know maybe most competitive players but you must always play a lower point line you must but yeah i think i might think about playing him at 75 Plus, so I just love the character, so that's I what I would that. lean more towards too, just because, again, let's say you have uh, the way this is worded too is like if there's a Kong on your team and a Kong on your opponent's team, then yes, there are one or more opposing characters that share a name with another oh, right. character on the map. Uh, yeah, so you're like right. if you have one Scott Porter and they have one Scott Porter, maybe they, don't, they aren't even rolling two. This still like triggers. So even if they if so if anybody copies for some reason someone's playing another major Logan. You know, kind of curious actually how that would work if there were two. Anyways, not going to get into that. But it, it does kind of show you, like, okay, so now Kong's, like, willpowers are worse, and his impervious is worse. I guess maybe you could still feel okay. Yeah, is, is this guy a bit of a Kong killer at 50, depending on what you equip him with? Sure. Honestly, also just making his impervious rolls, like, way worse. You give this guy Mermasa, he can just run up, flurry somebody as free. Uh, against Robot, again, Mermasa... Uh, I hate to be the ops on Matt Reed, but a free flurry against Colossal, Giant Damage Symbol, or Robot, he kind of hurts Master Mold also in by making the single D6 rolls minus one, which is kind of crazy for, like, factory yeah, dials, for, for leadership. Dial, yeah. So, wow, I mean, this Major Logan is is a pretty good Sentinel counter, I guess. I mean, that's who he's trying to kill, obviously. He's on the big Sentinel head. But, yeah, and it works out. And at 50 points is optional as a butterfly uh, calling from the sideline. So you could only use him if you ah. need to. Sideline. Right? If you're yeah. like, oh, I'm playing against this this team that this really affects. It has a lot of negatives for this opposing team. I'm going to pick Major Logan off the sideline for my 50 point butterfly. You know, that's pretty good. And that kind of gives him a self, sort of pseudo stop click at the end, too, to make him not quite as easy to kill. That is true. I forgot about the butterfly. That should always, I should never forget about that. It should always be in the anything mind. That's, anything that's 50 points is a butterfly. That's true. It's kind of like Facts. back in the day, um, are you 50 points, you're an Avenger. That is true. Yeah. Old Steve Rogers. So then just kind of wrapping up our talk about the whole Scott Portal versus the world, the super sealed Deadpool Weapon X. Uh, here was the top 16 going into cut. This is not where the rankings ended up, but I'm just going to read it off here. Wes Summers, Thomas Castell, Richie Elizondo, Cameron Bushcoter, Easton Brock, Lionel Clark, Stephen Swigart, Robert Williams, John Burgess, or Burgess, Isaac Denke, Jay Major, Aaron Morgan, Jason Salisbury, Joe Avs, Derek Lair, and then Lucas Van Holland, and I believe it was Robert Williams that won the entire day if the handshakes on the live stream, I'm led to believe, are correct. 
and then I'm pretty sure that is who won. I might be wrong, but that's who I'm pretty sure won. But now we can go into the the fifth, the fourth and final day. Crazy long event. 300, no, gee, I almost said 300 modern. That usually is the final day. I apologize. 400 yep. points Silver Age is what we actually had. Yep. And uh, we got the top 32 who made cut here. I'll go over that real quick. Ironically, the person who came in first and the person who came in second actually ended up facing off against each other in the actual mm. finals match, which is pretty cool. So that actually is first, cool. Lucas, Lucas Van Holland. I don't know. You might have heard Calder mention his name earlier. Joe Alves, Alex Mater, who's obviously been tearing up the Heroclix scene, fellow South Dakota with Calder. TJ Wheeler, Easton Brock, Anthony Berrigan, Isaac Denke, Ethan Jacobs. Mike Nelson, Justin Robinson, Corey Long, Alex Morse, who is a uh, fellow uh, Patreon member of Dial H, and I will go over his team real quick, because his team was pretty cool. He really um, sort of zagged when it comes to the meta. So, okay. Alex, came, going into cut, was 12th, all right, out of, out of all the players. He was not playing either Scott Porter and he was not playing tarot cards. So he's a man after my own heart. Wow. A man of culture. He is. He is a very intelligent man. He was playing Prime Spider-Man with Lightning Ring and Spectral Ring. Wong from um, Next Phase with the Cloak Levitation. Franklin Richards. Elian. Interesting call. With Darkhold. Felix Faust with Pumpkin Bombs. Collector. So this is a collector team, by the way. So he's getting the collector bonuses. Peeper. Spin Ring. Zero rings, so we're talking a lot of man rings. Green Lantern from BTU 096, like uh, 096 with the Green Lantern ring. That's the uh, 20 point legacy. And then he had Kathan on his sideline. So I thought this was really cool to see a team actually uh, make, like, not even like top 32, but like top 12 at the cut. Yeah. Without any tarot cards or either Scott Porter. So Anybody out there who's like, you can't make a cut at a major event without tarot cards or without porters. Not true, because Alex just did it. I loved seeing that, too. I was just, any kind of unique team building, I'm always pro. And then, like, yeah, going uh, very much against the grain of what is just, oh, automatically in team building. I put these two guys on there, and I've got to build a tarot deck. And then just go against the grain, like, again... I did well without tarot cards, and I love seeing other people do well without tarot cards. Where it's like you don't necessarily need them to do to do well at a major event. I like the team. I like the creativity. I knew Alex was a fan of that Franklin Richards and Spider Man because he he played them last year as well. So this is kind of I think an even more fine tune of his build last year with the new silver rules in effect. So it's really cool. It is, and I guess we should also give a shout out because Alex is. Works at for at a comic shop slash game store, and he is actually doing a event, Heroclix event himself. So he's got one that is in uh, Frankenmuth, the competitive dumb click. So his events, he's doing a. There's two different events that he at the two different stores that he manages. There, these are both in Michigan. And what it is, it's is you can only use the standard powers displayed on your figures, and only use the like no traits. It's just you're building your team with just whatever is on their basics. So like if your character has a special damage power, that is now just an empty click at that point. And it's 500 points golden. It's a $10 entry fee. And I guess, Calder, are, are you going to put the link in the, uh, in the show description? Yeah, I'll make sure it's in there so everybody can check it out. So he's got one that is on. Let me get the dates right just to make sure. He's got the win event links. Uh, it's it's like, one, the one that is in Franklin Moves on May 29th, and then the one that is on Bay City is on June 2nd. So that's the uh, clicks events that he's doing. That's cool. Congratulations to him, by the way, for making a cut like that. That is yeah, really awesome. absolutely. Continue on with the uh, top 32, though. Right behind him, maybe you guys have heard of him, Saul Elizondo, former world champion. World champ. One spot below our boy Alex. And then Scott Crampton. Two spots below our boy Alex. Maybe you've heard of him too. Followed by Cody Manti, Richie Elizondo, who is uh, another member of Toxic Clicks. Toxic Clicks, yep, from Mexico. A lot of big hitters in here. 17, Daniel Powell, 
18, Andrew Kilgore, 19, Alyssa McNeil, Adam Friedman, Jalen Major, Wes Summers, Reggie Lewis, Emma Bradforth, and then Josh Summer, Nicholas Ballou, Miles Kane, who was running Starro. So you got to give some pretty serious shout out here to somebody who was running Starro and made putt. Mad respect to Miles Kane. He's from the Generation Clicks. Mad respect. One of the hosts. Mad respect. Jose Berrigan, Joe Harrison, then Clay Wood, of course, the guy who runs the uh, HC, HC uh, units. So, great website. Maybe you've heard of it. Michael Eskew, we just talked about earlier. And Ed Arnold Berkowitz, father of the legend, who is also a legend himself. Be true. So, I'll, so like the finals, Calder, you watched the finals, right? You watched the final match of this? I did watch the finals match, yeah. So I watched it too. I'll go over Lucas's team real quick. I'm looking at a photo of it. He had, he this team was talked about going into the finals match as probably the team to beat. Like some people were even calling it, quote unquote, silver was solved. As in, if you're not playing this team, you have to be building against it. We don't know if that's actually true going forward, but Lucas kind of proved that true. He won. It was. Three Tri Sentinel. He had a Wendigo. He had both Scott Porters. He had Blackheart. He had um, My- Mad Jim. He had a uh, Legacy Daredevil. Obviously, he had the yellow ring on on Scott Porter. He had the Nifty Traffic Barrel, and then he had Amit's Tomb, which is like the key to this team because he can just move around, break barrier, and <clears throat> make it so easy for himself to just do all this ridiculous ping damage to you and retail. It's it's an incredibly powerful team. And Joe Alves is one of the best players in the world, but he still Absolutely. was not able to overcome it. I mean, and it wasn't like it was a blowout. It was a close game. It, it could have gone either way, but this team is very difficult. I know Lucas wiped every single team he played in Swiss. So I don't know if this is something that Rock and WizKids are going to be looking at in the future about some of these things maybe need to be watch listed or whatever. But I mean, this team is incredible. It's so difficult to beat. I I wouldn't know what to play against to try and beat it. Yeah, it was. I, I have to say, I didn't really know much about either person going into this matchup of like what they're playing. I really wasn't able to follow it throughout the day. And then seeing Lucas's team put on the map while I was watching the finals. It's gross. It's it's really gross. Turns out in a dice-based game of luck, not having to roll dice is really handy. Uh, and being able to do just that much damage without having to roll dice is kind of something pretty insane. So yeah, it's an absolute menace, and I'd be right there with you, Bill. I'd be like, I don't even have the greatest idea of how to counter build or what I would have played to also play against this team sometime throughout the day. Yeah, like, Joe, I think, if I remember remembering correctly, he had... I have um, his Spider-Man. team pulled up. I have it, yeah, so he actually... So his main force is different than what he ended up playing. He's got Kamala Khan and a main set AI giant girl, and then he has an Iron Spider from... Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage. He's running the double swap caps, I assume, at 40. He has Hawkeye, Hawkeye, Scott Porter, and Scott Porter. And then he has Ant-Man. And then if I click forward a little bit here, can I see what he swaps into? Yes. He swaps into, he now has uh, still Kamala Khan, still Giant Girl. But he now has the Mr. Fantastic, Slender Man Mr. Fantastic, the Hawkeye, the, yeah, the Hawkeye, barrier. the guy who breaks down all the barrier. The guy who breaks down all the terrain, all the not yeah. just barrier, but yeah. But yes, you're correct. Yeah, all the terrain except for debris markers, which has only gotten stronger, which is a great call. The Pegasus Captain America, and then he adds Spider Man, obviously Prime Spider Man, and then Miss Marvel Kamala Khan from Avengers 60th, so they can be carried by him. Do some attacks. He picks up the Waldo arms from what's his face the iron spider that he had so he gets those i can't remember if iron spider gets those for free um or not but either way that gets dropped in the swapping out and he's able to pick those up yeah 
it's it's also a solid team using some avenger swap being able to kind of cheat the rules a little bit in how much silver age stuff you have to have on your team when he can just swap it out for modern age stuff uh, i do think yeah. that part is very clever and i really enjoy it i mean it's both teams are great that's why they ended up being one and two at a one of the most important events in heroclix i mean watching yeah. lucas just like tear apart Prime Spider-Man by just dealing all that free damage by moving the Tri-Sentinels around was just like, wow, like Prime Spider-Man's so hard to kill. And it's like, no, nah, I'm just going to move and then you're just going to take damage. And that just, was like, how does it That was wild. That was a second where I had to like pull up Prime Spider-Man's dial really quick and then go back on the video and watch Lucas do it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess. Because when I first watched, I was like, no, he can't. The judge isn't seeing this. How is he killing this guy? And then, yeah, if you just kind of slow it down and watch it, you're like, dang, uh, sure enough. So it's it's wild seeing him go through Prime Spider-Man like that, especially as somebody who's, you know, number one, Prime Spider-Man hater, perhaps maybe mm-hmm. not, but uh, up there, certainly up there. Uh, and you're has tried to, list. you know, figure out ways to, like, kill this guy and kill him quickly. It's insane to watch it just be like, yeah, I didn't roll any dice, and he's, he's dead. Kind of nuts. It was but you know, we'll see what they what Rock and Wizkids think going forward. I don't know if they think it's fine. They think it's fine, but I mean, we'll figure it out. I'm assuming there'll be Silver Age events at Worlds. Um, I hope. Omnit's Tomb so easy to exploit now. Uh, that's what we're seeing now with all these competitive events. So we're just gonna have to see what happens going forward. I agree. So obviously, we we kind of talked about it, but Lucas won the day out with this one. Absolutely, the, Congratulations. the game. The game is not, uh, it's very much a more of a mental game than an action game on the board. I think Joe, well, Lucas had some solid setup. They both had solid setup, I think. The, again, ah, Morlock Tunnels is a, is a map that we see played too many times on at the final table. And that just goes for how strong Morlock Tunnels is. But I will say, as someone that records games, as someone that likes watching them, I am getting a little tired uh, of seeing more lock tunnels, uh, which I get it. It's just that good. It's just that strong. But I, I'm i ready for rotation or even an early ban, dare I say, of more lock tunnels because I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm done with more lock tunnels. I don't, I don't need to see, see it anymore. I'm all right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel you last night when I was playing some, some practice games. Guess what? Somebody, when they decided to pick map, they picked Morlock Tunnels. Shocking. There it is. Son of a gun. Yeah, see, and it's just like, I'm good. But, nope, you're going on Morlock Tunnels. So, yeah. At least we uh, won't see it modern after this year. For forever, I know, but, but that's an entire like, no. that's an entire nationals and worlds still of Morlock Tunnels, Bill. It's, uh, ah, yeah, so know. much. So many more log tunnels. Why? Why? It's the way it goes. But what's in the box? More what's, log what's the box? What's in more the box? Tunnels. Hopefully, not more log tunnels anymore. Literally, ever anymore. Because I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. <laughs> but yeah. So again, yeah. Shout out Lucas Van Holland for winning the Hero Clicks for Huntington's event. It was well earned. It was. I mean. I don't know how many times we see the number one spot go, I win every game leading in, win every game in Swiss. I don't know if he cleared every game in Swiss or not. I don't believe I know uh, his yeah, record. I, mean, he, he was, I know th- I, they were all 400 to zero. I know but every, so, but in course, Swiss, sorry, no, sorry, yes. 400 to, I don't know what the actual count was. Right, 400 or whatever. But the fact that he cleared his opponent, though, each time, and then I don't know what it was in top cut, but potentially also clearing your opponent each time in top, top cut, that is insanely impressive so again shout out credit where it's due and then that was hero clicks for huntington's that was the event it was looked like people were having a blast and i'm really happy about that so looks like a very good solid event any uh any last hero clicks for huntington's words that you want to throw in there bill i think the last thing i'd say is i love everybody who spent all the money in the auction i love all the people who came out and did the charity props this is all for a really good you know, thing. It's it's very important for charity that we as Heroclix players get out there and spend money. I know I was on the auction thing. I didn't win any of the things that I wanted, unfortunately, but I was trying, you know, trying to support the cause. And 
Shout out to Lucas for winning the final event. And I mean, he's on a roll here that he won a Depticon. Now he won this modern and silver. So look out, Nats and Worlds. Here comes Lucas Tom Van Holland. There it is. You heard it probably here first, folks. No one's ever heard of him until I mentioned him. So yeah, I'll fa- take credit. Facts, 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 facts. Uh, really quickly, I do want to mention uh, we didn't talk about this last episode, but the Gen Con schedule just went up for Hero Clicks. I think sometime this weekend, or maybe it went up earlier before then. I honestly I don't remember, but it's very much similar to last year. There are some pulp events throughout the days. There's a lot of battle royales throughout the days, and then there are the Nationals qualifiers with Nationals uh, a qualifier in the morning that Saturday, and then a 2 p.m. start for nationals at gen con and then a 10 a.m start sunday for the next round of things that and so we're not wrapping up uh it looks like gen con is not going to be wrapped up all at one night like it was the other day where they had a qualifier and they cut the top 16 looks like it's gonna be a little bit different i might click back to that now that i'm saying it but really quickly this is really fun uh a brand new event the clicks bowl Team Battle, HeroClix Gen Con Team Sealed at the Stadium. So I assume this is going to be the Lucas Oil Stadium. Shout out to another thing called Lucas. Uh, the description is going to be three-player <laughs> teams. Up Lucas. Yeah, hey, everything's coming up Lucas. Uh, three-player teams compete for exclusive prizes at the massive event. Three rounds of Team Sealed play, participation prizes for all, and each team receives tiered prizing based on their team's win-loss record. Uh the reason it's only going to be like three rounds and it starts super late and it's just going off win loss record. There's no cut. There's nothing crazy is because it starts at 8 PM uh, on Saturday. So this is probably in part as to why nationals is being cut up into two days because Saturday has this really cool event That's going to be at the stadium. That's going to end at around midnight, which is kind of wild. So hopefully a brick of the latest set, I guess that's probably going to be Deadpool weapon X. What is Gen Con? August like first through the fourth. So Deadpool Weapon X to potentially, like very, very potentially, who knows? Uh Justice League. Or not Justice League, excuse me. I have uh, that habit. Time. Masters of Time. Thank you. Time Masters, Masters of Time. The DC set. You know. The one with the Batman, the Superman, and the and those guys. I just it's so easy to call it justly. Uh Friday is gonna be the WizKids fan appreciation event. That's at eight PM. Uh and then like I said, so instead of the what we had last year, which was all of the uh what would you call them? X of Swords events, there's a bunch of DC Hero Hooks Royal Flush Gang OP events, which I'm actually excited about because I never got to play in any of our Royal Flush Gangs. So I might just maybe be able to sneak into a handful of Royal Flush Gang events. Some of but, those pogs are yeah, those bystanders look great. So that's the Gen Con events. You can find the full list by going to GenCon.com. You click on Gen Con Indie and then search for Gen Con Indie 2024 events. Just type in WizKids Hero Clicks. It'll pull up all of them. Uh, so it's pretty cool. That's what you guys can go ahead and look forward to seeing. Well, that's going to about wrap us up for news here. So let's go ahead and end the show with some listener questions. All of our questions from the show are coming from our Patreon-exclusive Discord. Bill mentioned it a handful of times, but we have a great community over on our Patreon Discord. I say it every single week, and I want to continue to say it. Um, so make sure if you ever thought about supporting Dial H for Hero Clicks, uh, what we do, the content we make, uh, feel free to join the Patreon. You can feel free to do it, but it ain't free to join. Uh, a minimum of five bucks, that's what gets you access to the Discord and a few like behind-the-scenes videos and a few other fun things with Patreon. Uh, but it's all mostly used through the Discord is how you'll access all of your benefits, as well as tri-monthly prizes get shipped out every three months to save a little bit on shipping. Kind of helps go a long way, which is actually going to be sent out here pretty soon. I believe this month is another tri-monthly month, which is kind of fun since we started doing that back in February. So those will be shipped out. So if you want to join the Patreon, there's never been a better time than literally right now, before the end of May, before I ship everything out so if you want a captain america with the cap wolf hulk shirt join the 25 dollar or higher tier at least for just one month in order to get that shirt uh, if you join any higher tiers i'll maybe send out a couple of shirts with you there but it is the seventh by the time we're recording this so you got about three ish weeks before the end of may so get all those orders and everything in join the patreon if you haven't before and if you want to get a shirt 
make sure to join up. But enough of that. Questions for the show. Uh, we Are Here asks, although Worlds is four months away, what do you hope to see when we get there? Reveals, teams, community, etc., etc. What do you think, Bill? I think the number one thing, I don't know if we'll be seeing reveals for this man. I really want to see reveals for the new Lantern set. Like, Absolutely. That would be amazing. Who is in it? What's the what's the roster gonna be like? Are we gonna see are we gonna see white lanterns? Because we've gotten black lanterns and we've gotten the rest of the spectrum. But no white lanterns yet in modern for I mean, since what, War of Light? Was that the last time there were modern like modern white lanterns? And I wanna see that. There was I mean, a mini OP kit thing that came out some months or a year or so after War of Light where the White Lanterns we got. Because I want to say there weren't any White Lanterns in War of Light. Or there was like one or two. There may be. It's hard. That was before my time. I've just bought a lot of those figures since. Okay. I guess I can't remember. What there were a there. handful of White Lanterns in War of Light, duh, the Entity, and a few others. Okay, never mind. Whatever. But yes, there was a, a just, OP kit a little while after War of Light came out, and those are the last White Lanterns we've gotten. I think that would be yeah, my number one reveal that I'd like to see. Nice. Yeah, I think we still don't know the set after Black Panther. I would assume by Nationals we would know what that is. So I, I'm probably with you. I think the Lantern set is the furthest out set that we don't know what it is, and by the time worlds comes around we might start seeing hopefully some like some sculpts or maybe even some dials that would be really cool so i'm fingers crossed on any and all lantern stuff uh, as far as teams go at worlds i'm mostly curious if or if not uh, there are some figures that were meta last year that make a reappearance specifically only at worlds Kind of like how 2x2 two two APOC was insanely meta prevalent in 2022, and then he made a uh, kind of just re-showing, like totally died after his change, completely died. No one really played him uh, until one or two events pre-Worlds, and then during Worlds, 2x2 two two APOC, again, led by Lucas Van Holland, uh, did very well at Worlds. So it would be kind of curious to see how well, if anything like that shakes up again, right? So... Prime Spider-Man and a few other things that retired were mostly the popular stuff at Worlds, so it's not like there's a bunch of people that aren't playing Prime Spider-Man. There are people that aren't playing, uh, what would you call it, Masters of Evil. But I would like to see if maybe uh, One Man Army Apocalypse is played again at Worlds. You know, like that snuck in to Top 32, which is really cool. So if there were any things that were worries last year, if they become... Uh, worries again this year when many people maybe have written them off I, I guess is to kind of collect my thoughts what I was trying to go for there no no I agree it, it is because like a lot of the figures that were great last year aren't suddenly bad this year right so it's like why are they not viable they think they still are along this I'm kind of along the same vein like what I would like to see would be I like people who build outside the box i kind of build outside the box i'm not as much into the this is what everyone is playing so i'm going to play what everyone's playing we're going to net deck whatever kind of player i like to make my own teams so i like creative teams like when we we talked about alex morris's team at silver and huntington's and same thing with miles miles kane as well i'm interested to see what people come up with that is actually very good but it's off the radar so, like, that's okay. the kind of thing that I think is cool. I'm, I'm not interested in seeing, like, did you just cut and paste your team from someone who won an event leading up to Worlds? That's not that interesting to me. If I, I'm When I'm at Worlds this year, if I see that, I'll, I mean, I know it's a good team. If I'm playing against it, yes, this is obviously a good team. But if I play against it and it's creative and I've never seen it before, I'm like, oh, respect. I respect that you came up with that team. It's unique. It's new. That's what I like to see. And that's what I want to see. Yeah right there with you Alex the Enchanter asks if Heroclix figures were not made of plastic what would you like them to be made out of feel free to also have mixed materials and not just use one thing so as far as game pieces go I think all game pieces are either wood plastic or in some cases metal 
uh, like meeples and stuff are wood, right? Uh, hero clicks are plastic. I'm sure there's different mixed materials or whatever that some game pieces are certain types of plastic or other types of plastic. So I guess ultimately that falls. I'd probably want, uh, I guess, die cast metal if I had to choose. That would probably mean we get way less Heroclix figures made, and they're a little more expensive if that was the case. But if I had to say, if they weren't plastic, I guess I would want Heroclix figures to be die cast metal. Yeah. I think, Alex, it's not a material. I think the actual correct answer is they need to be holograms, like mm. on the Millennium Falcon. You know, when they okay. move, you know, when like Chewbacca and like is like playing against. On the uh, on the Millennium Falcon, uh, on the Millennium Falcon space chest thing, it has yes, a name. Yes, like whatever, they, whatever whatever the game is called. I apologize, Star Wars nerds, if you're yelling at me right now that I don't. Oh, know they're gonna called. hit you with it. They're gonna tell you the name of the game, Bill. It's at Is on Bill on Twitter. Go ahead and go for oh, it. Dang. Um, hit me. Give me your best shot. Handing um, out the at. You won't at me. I dare you. It's, they can at me. I don't care. So. I think, you know, we've got the little, like, discs, right? So, like, how hard would it be for... I mean, come on, WizKids. Get it together. Just, like, have us buy an $18 booster and then, like, their holograms will pop up. I don't feel like this is that difficult. WizKids could easily do this. A I little mean, computer in each base yeah. for a hologram? It's just a little hologram of, like, oh each little gosh. figure. I mean, I feel like this is... I am i can't believe they haven't already done it. I mean, we're, we'll, you're saying we're past due for this. I mean, this feels like why do we not have this already okay I wow mean, that's my answer. why why do we not have holographic clicks at this point dang maybe you know maybe maybe you're spitting facts <laughs> holographic hero clicks it would be kind of fun if there were little animations with them too i would like i would really <laughs> well, they, like that I mean, that's that's how when they battle like when they're like like when they they go punch each other and stuff right like when you see them do it on the millennium falcon they i'm gonna google this what is it called I'm also curious, the Millennium Falcon, whatever, space chess, whatever it's called. Yeah. Dejaric. Playing a very, in, I want to play an intense game of Heroclix Dejaric, where I can walk around and have my character just punch the other person as a actual hologram. There you go, Alex. There's your answer. Done and dusted. Hmm. There it is. And then Will Holland asks, are there any figures from Deadpool and Weapon X that are standouts to you? I'll say right now, not enough people either understand why Timebreaker is one of the most broken figures I've ever seen printed in my entire life, and not enough people are talking about why Timebreaker is one of the most broken figures that they have ever seen in their entire life. Tom Bra Timebreaker is literally... Uh, insane. Yes, Tom, the, Tom Brady is one of the most broken, broken uh, figures of Man yeah. They, time breaker's broken, and um, I kind of I both love it and hate it because he mobilizes multi base figures. He like like point for point right now. Who's our only double TK in modern? Uh, I guess there's two. There's Polaris and there's Gordo. Right now, the exact same amount of points. You play that many time breakers instead. I also don't waste an action, and it's uh, like way more mobile than your double TK, which is insane. And also, it moves multi-bases and everything. Yeah, like, point for point, for five points, dude's is, is insanely nuts. And if you, all you do is look at Timebreaker and you go, oh, well, he's just going to be a waste of points or whatever. I am telling you, like, this may not be true in all cases because it's impossible for it to be, but movement is the name of the game. If you cannot move all up in somebody and be able to hit them after you move or while you're moving or whatever, uh, then you are not winning hero clicks. Why is Prime Spider-Man good? Honestly, take away the fact uh, some of his special movement abilities, he is way worse. That's actually just true. It's not because he's defensively great. It's because of how far he can move and then hit you uh, really, really hard. Like, his defense could be a lot worse, and he would still be that good. It's He's really a perfect storm of defense and movement, so this might may have been a bad call, but still, like, the guy moves fast, and he moves far, and that's why he's really, really good. Timebreaker mobilizes so many figures that are solid to making them great. Uh, so Timebreaker is, like, instantly the biggest standout. Like, that's the standout Heroclix figure of the year. Butts to the gods and anything else that's coming out, man. Timebreaker's insane. So that's uh, that's what I, that's my standout Deadpool Weapon X piece. That and 
Major Logan a little bit. I'm curious what the dice roll shenanigans actually end up becoming. Um, but yeah, what about what about yourself, Bill? I popped off there. I apologize. I accept your apology. I'm gonna have to disagree with Calder. Uh, Timebreaker is garbage. The actual figure that I'm picking is great. Insane. The figure that the figure that I'm gonna pick is Timebreaker because mm. it is insanely good, and I don't know why anybody isn't going to be be playing Timebreaker. It themes with Butterfly, which I also think is busted. Moving Kong or pick whatever you want all the way across the, the map, insane. I know some people will say, well, I'm going to come across the map and I'm going to like hit it with Porter and Pulse Wave or whatever. Cool. Guess what? What if I went up across the map first and just killed a bunch of your stuff and then you can't do that? Timebreaker is busted. Don't agree with Calder. Timebreaker's great. Calder's wrong. Timebreaker's great. Wow. 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 Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. But all right, guys, that is uh, that is all the questions that we have for the show. Uh, it's been a fun time. Again, shout out. Thank you, Bill, for joining the episode this week. I really appreciate it. It was pretty last 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 minute, late notice uh, to get him on. So that meant a lot. So, Bill, I'll give you the floor a little bit before we sign out of the show. If there's any shout outs you want to make, anybody you want to you know mention at all on the show, uh, this is your floor to do so. Oh, well, I'll say shout out once again to Alex Morris and his events he's got going out of shop. Congratulations, Megan Cut at Huntington's. That's cool. I also say, finally, what's in the box? The answer is definitely more lock tunnels. Well, you heard it here first, folks. If you want to go ahead and get all the latest cool stuff, that's Heroclix Singles, Sealed Products, all that cool stuff, you can get it at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5 for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order, and you can use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order at the shop.wizkids.com. <laughs> mind blanking there for a second. Uh, it does not work with Iconics and certain promo items. Like always, I'm your host, Calder Ness. This is Dial H for Heroclix. Happy trails. <laughs>